Shalom everyone, this is Amir Tsarfati from Honolulu. This is the, the last video you'll see from here. I'm on my way to the airport right now and um, just wanted to update you on a couple things, um, very important things actually. So I'm going to wait for uh, you guys to uh, connect to this Facebook Live. Later on it'll be posted on YouTube as well. Um, this is, uh, these are quite disturbing news for Israel and uh, I think everybody needs to hear that. So let me uh, wait a couple more minutes and again, I'm on my way to the airport to catch a red-eye flight that will bring me tomorrow morning to Atlanta and then I'm changing planes to Cincinnati. Uh, so I'm not sleeping tonight. time but it's already morning okay so let's start with this breaking news okay folks I want to talk about three things and these are super important and I think uh, no one else will tell you that so first of all on Tuesday uh, two things happen in two different places um, and uh, almost because of everything that happened in, in, in Nobody talked about the other two. Okay, so let me let me explain what happened. There were two Iranian drones, the type of uh, it's called Shahid. These drones are the Iranian mimic of the U.S. drone that they uh, downed during Obama's period, and they did reverse technology. Anyway, they were downed by the U.S air defense system above Erbil, but they were not aiming Erbil. Let, let me make it clear. They were not flying in the altitude that was there to aim Erbil. They were on the way to Israel. Iranian drones loaded with explosive were on their way to Israel and they were launched from Iran, not from any other Iranian proxy territory. In response, the Mossad operation immediately uh, was launched on Iranian soil in Kermanshe area, and three waves of drones were sent to an Iranian Revolutionary Guards Corp base, and we destroyed a hangar where they are keeping those Shahed UAVs. Um, and there were major explosions and the Iranians covered up the whole thing. So, the Iranians are emboldened to already launch attacks from Iran towards Israel. And thankfully, those drones were shot down by the US air defense system in Erbil, Iraq, on their way to Israel. So that's the first thing you need to know. Second thing you need to know is that while everyone's eyes are on the Ukraine, Russia just added another whole squadron of fighter jets in Syria, in the Khmeimim airbase, and in another airbase in Syria. Now Syria has Russian heavy bombers, Russian fighter jets, Russian reconnaissance airplanes, Russian air defense systems, and if that's not enough, this Russia is conducting a major exercise right on the shores of the Mediterranean. Now, why would you need to do that when your country is not on the Mediterranean? So think about that. While everybody's eyes are on Ukraine, but the Russian defense minister, Shuigo, arrived in Syria. He met also with the Syrian president and he was personally watching over exercises that are happening in Syria. Syria has Russia's only airbase outside of Russia and only seaport outside of Russia, outside of Russian territory or, or former Soviet Union territory. You, you, I hope you understand what I'm talking about. The war in Ukraine created an opportunity for the Russians 
to double their presence in Syria. This is phenomenal. I'm saying that because nobody talks about that. And another thing that is happening while everybody is asleep is that America is almost closing a deal with Iran. Iran is about to get immunity from any attack because they're closing a deal with America and they're doing that because they already know that by the time the deal will be signed they will have everything they need so they don't mind they actually get immunity nobody will touch them Russia is buying time for Iran and Russia is buying time for its presence in Syria while the eyes of the whole world are fixed on the Ukraine and regarding the Ukraine you know if you go to telegram where I posted uh, a map you can see and I, I, I tell you go to download telegram messenger and follow me there I give news around the clock I posted there a map that shows you the area of Donetsk and uh, in uh, uh, look um, you'll see <laughs> I forgot the name of uh, Lagonsk, Lagonsk, something like that but these are the two areas that that's where Russian separatists live and this is where uh, Russia is going to acknowledge their independence and then help them if there was a need folks they tell you it's about the Ukraine it's about the Middle East, it's about Iran, it's much bigger than you think. And I want you to pay attention because eventually what we're watching right now is bigger and it is wider and it is deeper than just the Ukrainian conflict that has been there forever. So I need you to pay attention to these things, it's super important. Remember the triangle that is being created now. Syria, Iran, and Ukraine. Ukraine is where the eyes are on. Syria and Iran are getting uh, the Russian, uh, you know, the Russian VIP treatment. Folks, some people ask me why would Iran, uh, uh, Russia wants Iran to have a deal? Well, Russia wants Iran to have a deal so Russia can sell Iran stuff. And, and Russia can do business with Iran because once there is a deal all the sanctions are lifted and Russia can you know can create a parallel business uh, opportunity if there will be sanctions imposed on Russia Russia wants to expand its its market you understand that? so I want you all to keep your eyes open but of all above all things not to get scared or, anx or anxious or, or anything people of God are not uh, you know we're not to have fear we don't have the spirit of fear but of power and love and remember this of sound mind do not fall into sensationalism do not fall into all these tricks of the enemy sound mind is what is lacking nowadays in so many people's uh, lives nowadays so we have to be very careful okay Listen, pray for me. It's a 10-hour flight to Atlanta, two more hour flight to Cincinnati. Uh, um, it's not easy uh, with my back, but I, I, I could use your prayers. I'll update you if there's something else, but remember, please forward this message, okay? Now, uh, last thing, I just launched my new book for pre-order. Tons of people wrote me. Um, this is not a commentary book of, of, of deep study. This is actually the easiest way book, the easiest book to read and understand um, the book of Revelation. I, I want you to know the, the book that I just launched is a tour. You know, I'm a former tour guide. It's a tour through the 22 chapters of Revelation. It'll be so easy for you to read it. And I hope that if your pastor is not teaching it, get one for him so he can start teaching. This, this book has also a study guide uh, attached also and you can get it and study together in home groups and all of that. It's called Revealing Revelation. It's online available on Amazon for pre-order. Hey, thank you. God bless you. I love you. Shalom from 
Honolulu. I'll see you 